Hello everyone. My name is Piyush Sajdeva. Welcome to another video in the series of Namaste Google Cloud. This will be a short video where I'll go through the concept of block storage in GCP and which storage option is recommended to be used based on your cost and performance requirement. Please watch the complete video as I will be doing some knowledge checks at the end with some sample exam questions. If you are planning for associate cloud engineer certification, if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified about all my upcoming videos. Without further ado, let's get into it. A block storage is a type of storage which emulates the behavior of a physical hard drive. These data disks are stored in blocks and are attached to the compute. In Google Cloud, it means they are attached to compute engine or a Kubernetes engine, which is GKE. Then we have a concept of persistent disk because a block storage can be persistent or non-persistent in nature. A persistent disk is a high performance block storage that uses solid state drive, which is SSD or a hard disk drive, which is HDD. And you can attach multiple persistent disks to compute engine or GKE simultaneously. The other difference between persistent and non-persistent disk is data stored in the persistent disk can be retrieved even after the instance is stopped, rebooted, or if it is crashed, the data will still be there. However, with non-persistent disk, it doesn't come with these capabilities. Once the instance is stopped, the non-persistent disk attached to the instance loses all its data. Compute Engine offers several types of storage options for your instance based on your performance and pricing requirements. So we have five different options to select from. So first one is standard persistent disk. So these are backed by standard hard disk drive, which is SDD and are lower in performance. And rest four are backed by SSD, which is solid state drive, which is high in performance. Because standard persistent disk is backed by HDD, it is recommended for the workload that requires standard throughput. Balanced persistent disk provides a balance of cost and performance and offers lowest cost per GB. Performance disk SSD or PD SSD provides lowest cost per IOPS. The recommended workload for extreme persistent disk are SAP, HANA, Oracle, these types of application in which uncompromising performance is needed. Local SSD are basically used as hot cache for database and real-time analytics purpose. So standard persistent disk is the most cost-effective solution and the recommended use cases are big data and big compute workloads. Balanced persistent disk is an ideal choice for running your standard enterprise applications. And performance persistent disks are recommended for performance sensitive workload. Extreme persistent disk guarantees highest performance among all those persistent disks. And local SSDs guarantees lowest latency for your application. So first four storage options that we have are backed by persistent disks. They can be used as a bootable disk. You can install operating system on these type of disks. And these provide the capabilities of zonal and regional replication. However, local SSDs are ephemeral storage. That is, they are not persistent in nature and it cannot be used as a bootable disk. It does not provide zonal or regional replication capabilities, right? Let's uh, have a quick knowledge check for your associate cloud engineer certification. Let's say you are a storage admin of an organization and you were asked to choose a block storage with the below requirements. The first one is data should not be lost in case of instance reboot or crash. It should provide you the lowest storage cost and it should be able to handle standard enterprise applications and data should be replicated in multiple zones. The next one is you can attach or detach a persistent disk from one compute engine to another. Is that statement true or false? 
Single persistent disk can be attached to multiple compute engines instances at the same time. Is this statement true or false? If you know the answers of these questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any issues understanding any of the topics that we have just discussed in the video, feel free to reach out to me and I will be more than happy to help you out. So that's it for this video guys. I will see you soon with the next video. If you like the video and enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family and colleagues. I will see you soon with the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.